record, shall we? So the whole presentation is now recording. And uh, thanks, everybody, for your patience tonight. Technology can be very exciting, but equally very frustrating. But there's always a solution if we stay focused. And well done to Angie and Bart for sorting that out. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be able to share a bit of my time with you tonight. Um, and as Anne said, one of the things that is absolutely fundamental to building a solid business is what we call a structure. And an awful lot of people, as they get excited about forever living, don't take a step back and look at how they should be structuring their businesses, not just for the short term gain, but for the long term gain. And so what I want to do tonight is I want to talk to you a little bit about the simplicity of building a chairman's bonus income that will run hand in hand with your gem bonus income. Now, for those of you that are on the call tonight who are already managers and who have already achieved chairman's bonus, then possibly the way you will see this training um, is about how you can develop more chairman's bonus legs. For those of you who are on the call who maybe haven't yet achieved chairman's bonus, I hope by the end of this sort of 40 minute presentation, you'll be able to see the simplicity of what you've got your hands on. Because in my experience, too many people overcomplicate the whole process in the beginning, or they don't know how to unlock all the income potential. So that's kind of where I am tonight and what I want to share with you. So what's really interesting is our very, very first chairman's bonus check ever was £12,500. And, uh, pounds. and our last one was uh, over $1 million. And even now, just thinking about that, just looking at that check, I still can't quite believe it. But it didn't happen overnight. That was a build-up of many years of looking at how to build strong legs, underpinned by strong legs, underpinned by strong legs, not just here in the UK, but globally. So rule number one, when you are considering developing a chairman's bonus structure, the first thing is you have to know the rules. Not only do you have to know the rules, but you have to be able to explain them in a simple way. And again, in my experience, too many people, when they start explaining chairman's bonus to their teams, go into every single little bit of detail about everything that could happen globally rather than just focusing on the simplistic rule of what happens with the people that you're immediately working with. So just to recap on the rules, to qualify for chairman's bonus, it runs from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. And to access the chairman's bonus qualification, you need to be a manager. And you need to, in that fiscal year, do 700 non-manager case credits. And that means that you've got to build a non-manager case credit base of around about 70 to 100 non-manager cases every single month. Now, that will give you more than the 700 that you need, but it will equally take into account that if you're building a business properly, where chairman's bonus runs hand in hand with building new managers, if you're running at about 80 to 100 non-manager case credit, if you're running at about 80 to 100 to so I have no idea where that interaction was coming from, but I think that we've probably muted everybody now so you can just hear me. If, uh, and if you can just give me a quick thumbs up that you can all hear me, then I'll carry on talking. Um, the reason I was saying that you need to develop a business that's doing between 80 to 100 non-manager case credits is because if you are reading the marketing plan 
in the correct way, what you will notice is, um, is that you will be developing managers alongside building your chairman's bonus business. So never, ever just run at about 40 to 50 non-manager cases, because otherwise, if you do that, what you'll find is towards the first half of the year, going into the second half of the year, your developer manager, your non-manager volume will drop. And you'll struggle by the end of the year to do the 700 that you need to do to qualify for chairman's bonus. Now, of that 700 cases, you need to do 150 case credits of new non-manager business. Now, what's interesting about this, that 150 cases can be done in the UK or anywhere around the world. Um, but if it's going to be done in other countries around the world, you need to be mindful of keeping a track of that because you have to notify your office of where your volume outside of your um, domiciled country is coming from. And a new rule that's just been implemented that I don't have on the screen right now is that your new case credits can be counted on what we call a rolling year. So say, for example, you recruit somebody in uh, February of this year, their non-manager case credits will count until February of next year unless they become a manager, in which case once they become a manager, their volume ceases to be non-manager cases to you. Um, you need to be 4CC active and leadership active every single month. That goes without saying. And you also need to be on the earned incentive. And I just want to clear up a, a misconception here. A lot of people think that they've got to be on the earned incentive at the very beginning of the year that they want to qualify for chairman's bonus. The reality is, as long as you're on the earned incentive at some stage during the year that you're going to qualify, that counts. And the next part of the qualification period, the rules, is that you need to have a 600 case credit manager somewhere in your organization. So somewhere in your organization, a 600 case credit manager, that does not have to be frontline. It can be on your third, fourth, fifth, sixth level. It doesn't really matter. But wherever you have that 600 case credit manager, your 700, your 150, your 4CC active, you're on the earned incentive or the forever to drive, that qualifies you for level one of chairman's bonus. Now, there are other little um, peculiarities that, if you like, layer the rules if you're building international business. But right now, when you're looking at working with people who are in your immediate team, probably live in the same town or village or area that you do, and they're brand new in forever, the, the probability of them building their first chairman's bonus check in the UK is very high. So my advice is don't confuse people with everything about the global part of chairman's bonus on day one, other than as they begin to develop global business around the world and they begin to develop um, other people doing chairman's bonus, then that qualifies them for level one plus one, one plus two, level two, or even level three. But initially, when you're working with a brand new person, keep it simple, keep it relevant to them so they can see it, believe it, get excited about it, and run for it. The minute you start overcomplicating it, doubt begins to creep in to a distributor's mind. And once somebody doubts their ability to do it, they won't be 100% focused on it. So moving on to the next slide. Obviously, there is a journey in um, developing a, a business that can give you a chairman's bonus check. And the one thing that I will say is, is that you need to have a plan. You know, unless you decide right now that you are going to um, develop a chairman's bonus business, it won't just happen. And you need to be thinking about it right now. And in thinking about it right now, you need to have a plan of what you need to do every single month in order for you to achieve chairman's bonus in October, November of, last, of next year, of this year. One of the things I really don't like is when somebody is running into the very last minute of the very last day of the year and they still haven't got all their volume in. And that probably is down to the fact that they don't have a plan and they haven't developed their non-manager case credits in the correct way. So right now, I want you all to think about the plan that you've got in place 
to develop Chairman's Bonus this year. And if you haven't got a plan, you need to write down right now, highlight it, square it, star it, asterisk it, need a plan. And then you need to get back with your qualifying apply manager who's done Chairman's Bonus and say, help me put a plan in place. Because once you have a plan in place, then you can break your activity down into consistent daily structure. Again, one of the things I've noticed over the years that a lot of people start the year with a great intention of achieving chairman's bonus, but their consistency in their daily activity doesn't match their desire to build a chairman's bonus check. And I've noticed how people are very, very sloppy in this area of consistent daily activity. And it's something that I will um, go as far as to say that if you can't commit to your daily activity in whatever shape or form that needs to be for you to achieve your goal, then the likelihood of you achieving chairman's bonus or indeed achieving any of the gem positions are going to be quite tough for you. Because if you think about it, if you are understanding the power of consistent activity, Consistent activity does not mean that you have to have a win every single day. Let me tell you, there are days that you are going to pick up the phone, go onto Facebook, go onto social platforms, do one-to-ones, do your marketing, do your interactivity with people and not get the results you're looking for. And the average distributor, when they have their days and their weeks like this, where they get rejected, They have people say no to them. They don't um, get the result they're looking for. What they tend to do is stop the consistency of their activity. And I've seen it time and time again. What happens is people run out of steam. They run out of energy because if they're not seeing instant results, they think it doesn't work. And sadly, I think we live in a world now where people assume just because they're doing a bit, they're going to get wealthy. They're going to achieve all the incentives. And it doesn't work like that. You have to think about the compounding effect. And the compounding effect is the more consistent activity that you do now will show itself in the next 30, 60, 90 days. But that also has a flip side for the activity that you don't do now. That will also show itself in the next 30, 60, 90 days. And let me promise you, what does or doesn't happen in January, February, March will have a massive impact on what does and doesn't happen in the last quarter of the year. So I am really big on focusing people on their prospecting activity because prospecting is the bottom line. If you are not talking to people on a regular basis, and that means every single day, you know, if you're part time in this business, you need to be focusing on three to five people a day every day. This is not open to discussion. This is black and white. If you make the calls, you'll get wealthy. And if you don't, you'll earn an okay income, but you'll never quite get there. And if you're full time, you're looking at talking to five to 10 people per day. And this will help you build a structure. And the reason I say this is because, you know, your first full year in forever needs to be a year of flat out activity. And I hear so often people talking about their uh, vision of being able to build a brilliant business that yields them a big income and all the incentives, especially chairman's bonus, in five to ten hours a week. Well, I'm going to burst your bubble right now and tell you I'm sorry, but you are never going to build a massive business in five to ten hours a week. You You are going to need to put a substantial amount of time into this business in your first year to get your business into momentum, to get that platform in place, those firm foundations. And I'm quite tough about that because I know how hard I worked when I first started in forever. You know, and there's no excuses. I built this business around four kids being at home initially for the first eight months around a full time job. But I was still doing 25, 30, 40 hours a week in my forever business. I was getting up an hour earlier in the morning. I was staying up till gone midnight every single night. Every single solitary moment I could was going into my forever business because I realized the importance of putting a business into momentum. 
So I'm kind of going to ask you, all of you right now on this call, is to be honest here when I ask you this question. You know, are you putting enough proactive activity into your marketing? Or are you falling into the trap of thinking it to death without doing it to death? You know, I want you to liken this one year of massive action underpinned by the next two years of structure and action into the way that can reap the reward. I worked hard in a full-time job for 20 years before I joined Forever. And when I say hard, I mean hard. I was very conscientious, worked incredibly hard, but I was broke. After 20 years of hard work and dedication and commitment, I still wasn't making any serious money. Within three years of being in Forever Living, not only was I making a six-figure income, but I was already structured to have my first level one chairman's bonus, because we didn't have it in the first two years in Forever. It was only in my third year that Forever, that Forever launched chairman's bonus into the UK. And the first check was £12,500, and then we never looked back. I mean, it literally jumped to 45,000, then up to over 100,000, and then it started getting into the quarter of a millions, and then it just grew and grew and grew. And all of that was down to the fact that I was totally committed to the hard work and the effort of prospecting on a daily basis. So when I say have a plan, your plan needs to really um, encapsulate what your marketing strategy is. And I am fascinated right now about... Um, people's marketing strategies because I see a lot of people running from one um, good idea to another. I see a lot of people confused about where they should put their time. I see a lot of people dashing onto one social platform and another social platform, doing a little bit here and there and saying, well, I've done a bit and it didn't work, so therefore I need to try something else. You know, having a marketing strategy is very simple. Choose the three methods of marketing that you are going to perfect your skills in. And that initially is your warm market. Now, how you handle your warm market is up to you. You may want to handle your warm market through uh, Facebook messages, through text messages, through WhatsApp messages. Or if you're really on the ball, you're going to pick up the phone, you're going to make some very, very good contacts with some of your best people, because let's face it, this is all about relationship marketing. But your marketing strategy needs to say, I am going to make so many calls a day into my warm market. I am going to do so many contacts a day into my Facebook or my social media platforms. I'm going to do so much per week into contact marketing. I'm going to get some cards and flyers done, and I'm going to give so many of those out a week or a month. And I'm also going to make sure that every single customer that I retail a product to understands there is a business model. And if it's not for them, I'm going to ask for referrals. So what you need to make sure in your journey to developing chairman's bonus is that you have a very focused marketing strategy in place that you are developing, developing, developing that's going to feed your three to five or five to ten contacts per day. And once you've kind of drawn that up and you've got it mapped out, the activity becomes easy. The activity is only slow and frustrating when you're doing a bit here, there and everywhere with no detailed plan. So it's really important that you have that plan. Now, on top of the plan, the next thing that we need to do is we need to build a pipeline. And again, this is really interesting when I look at um, – people's pipelines and very quickly when I'm working with somebody um, who wants to develop a big business one of the very very first things I ask them at every business planning meeting is let me see your pipeline I want to see your pipeline because if you don't have at least 20 plus people in your pipe type pipeline at all times you are not giving yourself a chance of recruiting consistently and regularly on a weekly, monthly basis. And again, the trap that so many people fall into is that they put all of their hopes into just one or two or three people. And they invite the same one or two or three or four people every single week to a BP, every single week to maybe something online, every single week to something, 
and a pattern begins to emerge when those two or three or four people begin to cancel on you or postpone on you or let you down. And because we're only thinking about those three or four people, we haven't got enough people in the pipeline at any one time to work with. Because the reality is, if I've been prospecting Helen at the top of my activity tracker and she's in my pipeline, she's in the pipeline, she's going through the process, but she keeps letting me down. If all I'm doing is focusing on her and I haven't got literally 15, 20 other people in my pipeline, it means I'm going to get disappointed week after week after week. And the one thing that I will share with you when you're building a pipeline is that you have to have enough people at any one time logged in to coming to um, to coming to online business presentations, to coming to presentations um, that are running hotels, that are running the home. But your, your entire activity to building a good business is to make sure that every single week you've got guests either at a, um, a company VP, at an online VP, at a VP that you might be running in somebody's home. But literally, you are feeding the pipeline every single week, week of people coming to the events. Because it's the events that build the business for you. It's the excitement at those events that will get people catching the vision of what is possible. So another thing that you've got to look at right now is what does your pipeline look like? And have you all honestly got a minimum of 20 people raising up to maybe 30, 40, 50 people in your pipeline? So you've always got people that are hot, that are in the process that are going through from contact to one-on-one or DV or website through to a VP online in a group uh, with the company and coming out the other end registering and planning. And if you haven't got that going on, then the business is not in momentum and the business is only effective when it's in momentum. So another thing to check against your goal of doing chairman's bonus is the number one marketing strategy And number two, how is your pipeline looking? Now, obviously, once we've got a pipeline, we want to understand the simplicity of what the business cycle is that kind of, if you like, layers the pipeline. And it's really, really interesting how um, if you've got enough people looking at the business at any one time, the process is really, really simple. And equally, I'll go as far as to say the process is exciting when you've got enough people going through it. The process is not exciting when you've only got one or two people at any time going through the process and they're not particularly good quality. Because when you're putting people into the process who are not good quality, you may have noticed that they are a bit negative, um, they're not visionary, they don't see what you see, they haven't got the energy that you've got, they haven't got the desire you've got. And therefore, that has a negative impact on you. What you will find is, is that if you're working with those kind of people, you're talking to those kind of people, it begins to pull you down. And you begin to eventually question what you're doing, question if what you're doing is right, question if you're, a, um, if you're doing the right things and saying the right things, because you're just working with the wrong kind of people. So as you're taking your prospects through the process, be mindful of identifying them as being A team or B team potentials. So when you first make contact with someone, the whole objective is really to show them the business, is to get enough information across them in the contact, whether it be online, face to face, uh, in a message, whatever. But the objective is you want to show them forever. And that's really, really simple. It can be via a one to one. It can be via a video, whether that's personal or a company recorded video or a group recorded video, or it can be via a website. And the one thing that you have to bear in mind is that all of your prospects will be slightly different in their need to view information. Not everybody is the same. Everybody's slightly different. So be mindful of the three or four different ways that you can share information with people to get them to take that initial look. But in getting information in front of people, our whole essence of what we do is to get people to come to a VP. And that VP is either a company VP, an online VP, or an in-home VP. 
And I have to tell you, some of the fastest growth we've ever had in our businesses, both here in the UK and globally, and we have a massive, massive business globally, is when we do the in-home BPs. The in-home BPs are phenomenal. They run very quickly, very, very quickly. And if you've got those structured really well, you can create some massive duplication literally within a few days of somebody joining. But ultimately, when someone's been, a BP, been to a BP, you will answer all their questions and quite simply get them registered. And register, registration simple is either hard copy or online. And as soon as they've been registered, you want to go into the pre-planning mode. Pre-planning is quite simply getting them to identify what they're prepared to work for. And it is about what they're prepared to work for. And again, I don't think enough people identify this in the early days. You know, when you're working with a brand new person, it's not what you want, it's what they want. They are going to be driven by their desire to achieve something that's important to them. So please take the time to find out, to get them to really think about what's important to them. And I ask people to do that in the pre-planning session. I want somebody to come to me for their first planning, clearly knowing what they want to work for, clearly having done a list of, their, of the people that they are going to want to start sharing the opportunity with. And I want them to have watched all of the pre-planning um, pod videos that we have on the QLS site. Very, very, very important. That speeds the whole process up for me, and it will do for each and every one of you, because as you begin to work with three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people front line at any one time, you need to make sure that the pre-planning process speeds the process up for you. You'll exhaust yourself if you try and do it all yourself on a one-to-one -one basis. That means they come to the planning session um, prepared for you to quite simply plan the case credits for manager. And it is about planning a manager business. This is a manager developing business. It's a manager developing process. Everything kicks in at manager. So around planning the case credits for manager, when I'm working with a brand new person, I'm looking at their recruiting strategy how they're going to develop some customers and how they're going to coach what I teach them into the people that, that they recruit. And that's the simplicity of the cycle. And I see people overcomplicate it time and time and time again. And the other thing I see time and time again, which will come and bite you in the backside in months and years to come, is when people reinvent the wheel. It's really interesting that... Um, People reinvent the wheel to try and shortcut the process, to try and get to the end result quicker. You know, there is no shortcut to building a long-term legacy, legacy style income. You might be able to shortcut things short-term, but ultimately long-term, if you're looking to build the kind of income that we've built that in 20 years has never, ever, ever gone backwards, that in 20 years has grown consistently every single year, that in 20 years has become solid, not just in this UK, in the UK, but around the world. It's really interesting, actually, analysing our business. John always analyses our business at the end of every year, going into the new year. And uh, I know that it's been a phenomenal, phenomenal year in the UK for so many of the team. Just incredible what's happened People have had unbelievable growth. But whilst the UK has had unbelievable growth, some of our biggest growth has actually come from Europe and Africa. And that's been really interesting to see. And interestingly, that the growth is coming from the people that have put their time in to build solid foundations. Foundations that are never, ever going to fall. They're never going to fall over. They're never going to tumble. So remember, what I share with you is important because if you want to build a legacy style business, keep the cycle pure, but layer the cycle with your creativity. No one's going to take that away from you. No one's going to take your ability from being creative away from anything that you do. But keep the cycle pure, because if you don't, what will happen is by the time you get to 
generation five or 10 or 15 or 20, the cycle, if it's been compromised, will begin to um, weaken. The process will begin to weaken until eventually on your 20th level, the people are working a process that bears no resemblance to what you're doing. And bit by bit, it will stop working. And so from the bottom upwards, it will begin to it will begin to collapse. And I've seen it happen time and time and time again. The weakest link will always be the one that says it doesn't work. And as they quit or take their foot off the ball, the person above them gets wobbly. The person above them gets wobbly. And before you know it, it's like a stack of cards tumbling from the bottom upwards. So be mindful of teaching your team the process. And then if you want to layer it with your creativity, go for it. Because, you know, anything that you can do that speeds it up, then that's absolutely brilliant. But the simplicity of the process has to be pure wherever you build. And you also have to be mindful of what we do here in the UK doesn't necessarily work around the rest of the world for whatever reason. Because all countries, all continents have different economic climates, different structures. They have different um, ways that people receive information and interact with each other. So be mindful of that as you are, uh, if you're thinking about reinventing the wheel. Keep it pure. Keep it simple. Now, constant activity will result in you recruiting. And ultimately, at the end of the day, if you're not recruiting on a regular basis, then the lifeblood of your business is not flowing. You know, retailing is brilliant, but retailing is just something we do as a byproduct of recruiting. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're going to go and talk to someone about the business and they say no to the business or it's not for them or not now, then you must turn them into a good customer. Because not everybody you talk to is going to join the business. And I would rather you be talking to more people about the business than you are about the product because you can turn someone who is not right for the business right now into a good customer. And as you continue to prospect them, the more relationship they have with the product, the easier you will turn them into a good key leg. But one of the things I want to emphasize right now as you are looking at the structure of your business is are you working with enough key people? And the one thing that I always say is you've got to be working with five key legs at any one time. And it's really interesting how people define what a key leg is. You know, a key leg is not someone that's registered. It's not someone that starts off great doing a lot of retailing but won't start the recruiting process. <coughs> um, for me, somebody who is key in the business is someone who has sat down with you, they have planned a manager business, and they are committed to achieving manager. Now, whether that's in five months or six months, in seven months or eight months, I don't mind, but I want that commitment to achieving the manager position. To me, that is a key person. That is then underpinned by their ability to focus on the activity. And again, I'm going to quantify this. You will have people that have planned to manage your business with you. You will have people that are consistent in their activity, but for some reason they're not yet getting the results. This is still a key person to me because as long as someone is doing, it means they're learning. And if someone is learning, it means I can coach them. But if someone has got to manage a business that is planned, but is just not taking the action, making excuses and giving you every reason why things aren't happening, they're not key. So be mindful and have an honesty in the way that you view your business, in the way that you're working with your teams. You know, you may have recruited someone that you really like. It could be a best friend or a family member or someone that you hold in high esteem. And you think they're key, but they're not ticking all the boxes in what a key business represents. And it's hard because you have a relationship with them. And it's hard to actually level with them and say, hey, look, you know, let's put our business, let's put our relationship to one side for a moment and look at the business and what needs to be done for you to achieve your goals. And right now, if you don't mind me saying, 
You know, you're just not doing what needs to be done to achieve manager and beyond. So just be honest with me. Are you serious about forever or not? And sometimes you need to ask that question so you can honestly define who your five legs are. So if you're on the call right now and you're working hard towards chairman's bonus this year, have you got five legs in place? Are they honestly five key legs? And if they're not, then identify what you need to do to replace those that aren't key and get to work quickly. It's really important that you do that. Now, if you've got five key legs in place, as each leg comes through to assistant manager and beyond, you need to be underpinning them with a new key leg. So you're not just working with five people, period. You've got five people moving towards manager and another five coming up underneath. Now, the beauty about this is it's going to build your non-manager case credit. So remember, to have a really sound structure, you want your key people moving through to manager, other people coming underneath, so you can keep the non-manager case credits high, so you still are on the way to 700 plus, as well as developing new managers that will become your chairman's bonus legs at the end of this year going into next year. So it is about understanding that balance. And if you can get your head around that, then you're going to see some really good results as you work towards the end of this year. Now, once you plan your new distributor to be a manager in five to six months, you know, your case credits can, can look however your upline is teaching you. You know, so you could have a five month plan to manager, which is five by 15 by 30 by 50 by 70. You could have a six to seven month plan to manager for somebody who is maybe a little bit more tentative at the beginning. That could be five, 10, 15, 25, 35, 50, 70. And that's for somebody who's a little bit more cautious because you're going to have your A team managers and your B team managers. And you need a plan for both of them because you don't want to risk losing anybody that has the potential to be manager. Just to give you some idea, at the back end of last year, I broke three new frontline managers, and every single one of them had a different journey. You know, one girl went manager in five, six months, another one took nearly 18 months. And you know what? It's not a measurement of was the one who went fast the best manager. They were all brilliant managers because they all got there. And every one of them's got a structure to go on and achieve chairman's bonus and more. Because you've got to look at this at the in the long term. Every manager that you can develop is, is absolutely vital to your business long term. Okay? So really be mindful of that. Everybody's valuable. Um, it's not You're not just looking for the people that can do it in two minutes. Every single person you develop is really, really important. Um, yeah, I just had a fantastic time out in Zimbabwe. Phenomenal team building out there. Um, and, you know, working in very, very difficult circumstances, very different to what's happening in the UK. And I'm, I'm pretty certain to say that most people in the UK, if we put them into Zimbabwe, just would never be able to build a business because it's so different, so tough, so different to what you're all used to. But this team out there are all planned to do chairman's bonus this year, and they will do it. And they're all mindful of the structure of the two or three different types of managers that will potentially join their business and develop to be manager. And you need to be mindful of that as well. Something that's really key when you're looking at a structure for any new manager, and this is really important, and normally I would go to a whiteboard and I would draw this up, but I hope that you get it visually. What's really important when you're working with a new manager is not just getting them to manager, but what is going to happen in the five to six months after they become a manager. Okay, because that's really important as well. And this is really why the non-manager CCs are important, because when I'm working with anybody and I draw out their initial structure, I'm drawing out the five key people. And I'm drawing out the five key people because if I can work with five key people with my new distributor quickly, 
what I'm going to be able to do is identify pretty quickly who their first two potential managers will be. And that's important because if I can develop a manager in five, six, seven months, I really, really want to have two managers coming up behind them within the next five to six months. So within a full 12 month period of somebody joining the business, not only can I get them structured for chairman's boat, get them to manager, but I get them structured for chairman's bonus and I get them through to Eagle and I get their case credits high up to 100 per month, non-manager. And that's a perfect structure for doing a good 12 month plan for somebody who's an 18 potential manager. So they go manager in five, six, seven months, and behind them comes a manager within the next five, six months. That is a perfect sound structure. Now imagine if you could develop two or three people like that every single year. If you could develop that kind of structure every single year, it means that you would very nicely over the next few years go from level one, level one plus one, level one plus two, level two, level two plus one, level two plus three, level three. And it's about having a plan as to how you're going to get there. So if you think about it, if you develop two frontline managers a year and help them to structure the chairman's bonus, you potentially will have a level two check at the end of your year two and a level three check within three years. So you will hear me say often that I am all about the structure. Everything I do is about structure. And I have to say, it hasn't stood me in bad stead over the years. The structure of our business around the world is phenomenal. And uh, I think that uh, this year, in the world of forever, it puts us in at number two or number three as a group worldwide. And that's just phenomenal. And I'm so proud of all of the leaders that contribute to the growth of the team worldwide. And a lot of that is about how we begin to plan people. So for everybody on the call tonight, if you're brand new into the, into the business, think about where you want to be in three years time. And think about what you want your business to look like. Think about the incentives that you want to be achieving. Think about the kind of business that you want to be building that's going to yield you not just a monthly income, but an end of year bonus. That's not going to yield it just for you, but you're going to help people in your team achieve it as well. Because the more that you can help develop a strong business that's underpinned by two, three, four, five people, then the more secure you're going to be yourself. And when you're looking at developing your chairman's bonus legs, remember you want them underpinned by other chairman's bonus legs. And if I look at all of our 11 legs that we had um, last year in chairman's bonus, all of them are now underpinned. Every one of them are underpinned by other CB achievers. And that brings security, safety, it guarantees every year that you're going to achieve the goals that you set out to achieve. So don't just think in the moment. Think about the long-term implication of the business that you're building today. When you're in forever, you're in forever. This is a business that will outlive you if you do the right things, if you put the right effort in right now, if you put the right structure in right now. So it's not just about the legs that you've got. It's not just about you. It's about the legs that you're about to develop. So as I say, our first profit share check was £12,675. And there was just us in our group that achieved profit share. And that was what it was called all those years ago. Obviously, over the last two or three years, the name has been changed to Chairman's Bonus. And the generosity of Rex paying back all that money to those people that put the time, put the effort in, that think about the structure, that think about not building something just for themselves, but reaching out and helping other people as well. That is going to develop into incomes that are going to exceed your wildest expectations. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen instantly. It takes time and it takes focus and you're going to have disappointments 
and you're going to have things that happen that you didn't think would happen. And you're going to have things that are going to happen that are good that you didn't think that are going to happen. I mean, last year we had a leg in East Africa qualify for chairman's bonus. We didn't even know who they were. And that was a real plus. But equally, we had a leg that didn't uh, qualify that we thought what would, but it was out of our control. It was because there was a death in the business. And that was very sad. It was tragic. So sometimes things happen that are in your control and sometimes things happen that are out of your control. But the key is that you just keep building with integrity, with honesty, doing the right things, keeping the process simple, knowing that if you work initially locally, that if you take the time to learn your skill sets locally and then you begin to build nationally and then eventually you begin to see the bigger picture and you build globally. And over the next two, three, four years, as you put your structure in place, you are going to see things happen that you never, ever dreamt of. But I promise you, if you take the time to learn and to apply, to learn and to apply and to work with the right people, that life is never going to be quite the same for you ever again. So you can do it. Everybody on this call can achieve chairman's bonus. So let's just recap. The first thing is you need to have a plan. Never, ever leave anything that you want to achieve down to chance. Never. You know, there is an old saying that those people who are failing to plan are ultimately planning to fail. You can't achieve anything in life without a plan. And a plan is vital. And if you don't have a plan right now, get back with your upline manager or get back with the person above them who's achieved what you want to achieve and work on it. Put a plan in place that you're prepared, you're prepared to stick to, that you commit to, and that you do come what may and you see it through to fruition. The second thing is your work ethic. You know, you've really got to look at the work that you're putting into your forever business. And you've got to ask yourself, are you doing enough? Are you doing enough on a daily basis? And there's two answers to that question. There's yes, I am doing enough or no, I'm not. And if you're not, you can change that. If you're not doing enough, it's very simple. Make the plan. Look at what you need to do on a monthly basis, then a quarterly basis, then a half yearly basis, then running into the end of the year and then work it back and look at what you need to achieve every single day. Now, the other answer is, yes, I work hard. And that's split into two ways. Are you working effectively when you're working hard? Or are you running around like a headless chicken working hard, but not really getting to where you want to be? And that's another thing that you've got to check. You know, a lot of people work hard, but when you really look at what they're doing, they're not joining up the dots. They're not working the cycle and keeping the cycle running quickly. They're spinning too many plates, trying to do too many things that don't add to the plan. So check your work ethic and make sure it's all working towards the plan. The third thing is desire. You know, you've got to have that deep down burning desire that you want to achieve chairman's bonus. And one of the sad things I hear quite a lot is, oh, I don't need to achieve chairman's bonus. You know, at the end of the day, it's a lot of hard work to pick up a check for two, three, four thousand dollars. And I shake my head in disbelief when I hear people say that. You'd be surprised how often I hear it said. Chairman's bonus isn't just about achieving a check. Chairman's bonus is about so much more than that. Chairman's bonus is about achieving the check because you can do it. It's about achieving the check so you can be an example to others. It doesn't matter how much it is for your first or second check. It's about the fact you can do it. And that gives hope to your team because if you can do it, they can do it. Chairman's bonus is about the person you become on the journey. And that's an interesting one as well because I see so many people get changed by the amount of money that they earn. They go from being phenomenal people to changing 
drastically because they've got all this money. You know, never lose sight of who you are and where you've come from and what the money can not only do for you, but can do for others. So remember, chairman's bonus is massive. It's the person you become on the journey. It's the skills that you learn on the journey. It's the example that you give to others when you achieve it. And it's the stability you're building into the business for the next generation and the generation after. So have a deep down burning desire to achieve chairman's bonus for more than just the check. You also need to have a great attitude. You know, if you've got a plan and a great work ethic and a great desire, but you've got a lousy attitude, you're not a team player, you're not prepared to help others, you're not prepared to put the work and the, and the ethics in place, then it doesn't quite work. So your attitude is absolutely vital. And initially that is, I can do it, I will do it, failure is not an option, I will not get a, give up when the going gets tough, because the going will get tough. I promise you, none of us have got to where we've got to today without being challenged. Challenged by people, by situations, by things that should have happened that didn't. Challenged by all sorts of things. You may need to make sure that you have a great attitude. So if you put all those components together, then I would say, yes, you can do it. Not just chairman's bonus, but absolutely everything. Because I believe that success isn't just an event. Success in our industry becomes a lifestyle and your dreams are only fulfilled when you perform on a daily basis with passion and excellence, not just for one day or two days, but day after day after day after day. And when you can encapsulate that and focus on it and bring it into your daily activity, not only will you make a lot of money, but you will have a phenomenal way of life and you'll have that phenomenal way of life and make a lot of money because you've improved yourself and then you've reached out to others and you've helped them achieve excellence as well. So you see, building a business is really very, very simple. We have a choice. We can keep it simple or we can overcomplicate it. And I, for one, choose to keep it simple because the power of a global business is having a simple process that you apply day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, and watch the results come in. It's been a real pleasure talking to you all tonight. I hope that you've all enjoyed what you've heard tonight, but more importantly, you'll put it into action. And I won't say good luck to all of you, but I will say great success with your forever journey. And I'll see all of you pretty soon somewhere.